So this time around we're going to be building the rest of our kitchen cabinets and that will be in the same style as our fridge cabinet here. And we're going to be doing it in an L shape going along the bulkhead and up to the shower there. just picked up some wood to build our kitchen cabinets which is sitting there in the back and it's a lot more awkward to get in so this could be the last time we'll actually be able to go and buy a full sheet of ply so hopefully we're not going to need too much more. They are a pain when you buy them full size. Yeah <laughs> so now I'm going to get back have some lunch start building the kitchen. So what we're thinking is our oven is going to be in this kind of area underneath the hatch and the sink is going to be somewhere here next to the window. We've got our diesel heater which is here so we're going to be needing to box around that a little bit and also because of the plumbing for the sink and also some bits and pieces for our recirculating shower. Just stuff like that that we need to kind of get our heads around, maybe need to plan it on paper. <laughs> So we have been through quite a few different versions of this, taking quite a long time to figure out what we're going to do, but we think at the moment that for this side of the kitchen, we're going to have our sink sort of in the middle here with a nice um, tap that's going to pull down into the sink and that will have drawers either side, one being cutlery drawer and the other we're not sure yet, but will be useful for something. And then we're going to have two cupboards underneath. This cupboard is just going to be holding our tank that's going to hold our water for our recirculating shower. And the left one is going to be opening up into a corner cupboard there. And then for this section here along the bulkhead, this is our plan here. So a little bit more complex probably this side. We've got the hatch here and this is our oven which is sat underneath the hatch. And this is where the L shape cupboards start here. So we're going to have a big uh, drawer underneath the oven for some pans. A narrow pull out style pantry slash uh, plates and cups of drawer. And I think next to that, we're going to be having a little seat here, just so that we can, only big enough for one person, but so that we can sit here and enjoy the sunshine with the door open. Yeah, we thought that'd be quite nice, have an extra spot. Yeah, and that would also have a, a drawer underneath, which we can pull out this way, put all of our shoes in it, and it'd give you somewhere to sit when you're putting your shoes on, or put your shopping in, put shopping on when you're filling up your fridge and stuff like that. So I think it would be a good addition. What we're probably going to do is build a kick plate area all the way around as an L shape and then put the cabinets on top of that. Similar to how we did it with the fridge, but for the fridge we then later join them together. So yeah, I think, uh, what do we start with doing? Start playing around and just boxing around the heater I suppose. I guess so. of roughly what we're thinking. So we've just raised everything up 17 and a half centimetres I think it is, which is the same as this kick plate and that clears the diesel heater and we've got all of this space in here which possibly we'll be able to use for some pumps or the water pumps and stuff like that later on as well so we're not wasting any space. We did think about making this a little bit bigger that way but if we do that then that obviously shortens this one so it's a bit of a trade-off and we realise if we shorten this one too much then we can't have a usable door here to be able to get in and use this quite awkward corner space. Then that will be where the feet go and it's a fairly, hopefully, fairly usable kitchen space. What do you reckon Abby? It's not too bad, quite like it. It's nice seeing it being framed out. So today we have cut a few more pieces of wood and already now we've started to have second thoughts about <laughs> how we're doing it, haven't we? A little bit, yeah. So I think what we've decided is that this side we're going to just keep going all the way to the floor and that would be a much easier whole cabinet to make. We also realise we're not really going to be standing and needing the toe kick on this side because it's just where the cooker is and a seat. Yeah. So yeah, just a bit of extra work for no reason. But we'd still like it on this side so we're just trying to work out what happens 
when the two pieces meet. So I guess that means we just have to... Start again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be an easy project it soon. Just love the great British weather. At least I get a chance to use my jazzy umbrella though. <laughs> How's it going, Tim? Yeah, pretty good. So we've cut the main big pieces for this unit on this side now, and we're just trying to figure out how we're going to do the shelves for them because we need a shelf for the oven, and actually, it's pretty much the only shelf we're going to have, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to have an oven shelf <laughs> which we need to put in. When we built this cabinet, we used Baltic birch plywood, but we couldn't get any of that because it's ridiculously expensive at the moment. So what we've gone for instead is this one, which is a poplar plywood with a eucalyptus veneer on the top. So this one's the birch plywood, and as you can see, it's a little bit thicker than the, um, the poplar eucalyptus one. And that difference is enough to mean that we basically can't pocket hold it. We've been trying, and it's the, the birch is pretty much on the limit of what you can do. But with this one, the screw is either poking through too far and actually sticking out so you can feel it on the other side, which is obviously not nice, a sharp point or the head of the screw sticks out. So it doesn't really work. So what we thought we'd do instead is for this one, we're gonna router in a groove for the shelves to sit into and it'll hold it in place. So that does actually take my full weight and I'm just over 11 stone, so about 70 kilograms. Ejected. <laughs> this one is actually lighter, even though as you can see, it's fair amount bigger actually. So it'll be a little bit more fiddly to build with, but hopefully it'll all come together still quite nice in the end. We'll get a decent finish like we did on this one. So this is looking just a little bit precarious, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure out how high the shelf has to be. And obviously it depends on, on the oven. So we've actually brought it into the van for first time, I think. Yeah. This is roughly simulating what the worktop is going to be, and we want the um, hob burners to be clear of the worktop. Yeah, I think it needs to just come Not much. up just a little bit. So the way we're cutting out the grooves is we've got a 12mm straight bit in the router, and the depths we've set to about 4mm, and then we've just got it on a straight edge on here, and uh, then all we need to do is basically just pass it all the way along, and it's just going to carve out one really nice groove which we can slot the other piece into. Because we want the oven to be basically in the centre so it sits naturally under the hatch there, we've uh, got this kind of awkward narrow channel between the two units. Yeah, it's just whether we build an extension onto this cabinet or we do something on this cabinet and build it out further that way. I feel like half the battle is just getting a piece that's really big down to the right size. Very annoying. <laughs> not doing it very well. No, you're really not. <laughs> what are you doing? really nice sunny day this morning but before we can get on and carry on with the kitchen we have got to sort out this flat tire we picked up. Yeah we've not changed the tire on a van before so I suppose it's a good opportunity for practice but
Tiring, get it? <laughs> That's quite good. <laughs> Behind the cop, right? How very annoying. <laughs> Should have enough pieces for a dry fit now. I think so. Right. Standing up by itself. <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you reckon? Not too shabby. Yeah, I like it. Snazzy. Something like that. Nice. That should be good, shouldn't it? <laughs> Just got to sand it all and put it together, glue it, and we'll have a cabinet. Yeah. Tell you what. I feel like I grabbed the oven at just the right time. <laughs> so it took a little while to get there, but we think we've got all the pieces ready now to put it all together, finally. Another piece of furniture flat pack. Yeah, just hope it all fits together okay. Actually, really glad we put the seat in. Cool. So as you can see, we wanted the cooker to be square with the hatch behind. Just thought it would look the best that way. But that did leave this little gap here. So that's why we're going to have a very tall pull-out pantry drawer. And that's why we made these runners at the top and the bottom. It's going to be like a vertical drawer, isn't it? Yeah. So the runners will be there and on the bottom side, so that you have more width here. And then here, underneath the seat, will be just one big drawer, probably for all our shoes and stuff. So you can just take, take out the drawer, choose your shoes, sit here, put your shoes on, <laughs> stuff like that. So one of the things we've tried to think about when we're doing it as well is how the gas run is actually going to get to the cooker. Because we're going to have the gas coming up through the floor here, because that's basically the best point underneath the van where there's nothing there we've checked and also the gas tank is going to be about here. So we've left little kind of channels between each of these walls where we can put the pipes through and pin them to the floor and that will go along underneath the cabinet and then up behind the cooker where we have then left a little kind of channel for the pipe to come through and that gap there is also going to act as a dropout vent for the oven. The idea is that if there is a leak on this connection here that gas is heavier than air, so we're all kind of imagining it pooling a bit like a bit like uh, water pools, so a form like a, a fall to the floor in the form of puddle. So what we've done is we've put a wall at the back of this one, so that if any gas does leak out, it can't fall down and then fall into the drawer, and then basically it can't escape. And then we've got little channels at the back there, so there's a gap between the two walls, and it should fall and hopefully flow kind of along these channels back into this area where there'll be a dropout then and it can escape through the floor. So yeah, just trying to think about stuff like that now so that when we come to do the gas later, it's not gonna be a massive pain. So this never happens to us. Pick up a random piece of scrap that we've got and it's the perfect measurement on both dimensions to just slot in there. <laughs> How has that even happened? Result. <laughs> All right, next bit. <laughs> Is 
So last night we glued and screwed most of the kick plate area together and we've just put it in the vanish to see what it looks like but we've stalled a little bit for the moment just because there's a lot going on in that area, lots of plumbing, electrics and all the heating stuff. It's very busy. It's going to be like a utility <laughs> cupboard. It is really. It's like a big service area. So with the ducting we're going to have it coming through this hole here and out here for the hot air on one of the vents and then this is our shower tank. So we'll take that out of the way. Then what we have decided I think is uh, we're going to put a diverter in here because we're basically going to be using a heat exchanger for the shower and um, this is from the bubble vans kit and that's going to be heating up our water and that needs to sit there which again has just enough space to get in and this diverter will go in there so that we can choose basically whether we're heating the van or we're heating the water for the shower when it goes down the pipe that way and then this thing has a little flap inside it's a manual diverter so we can choose how much percentage is going to heat the van versus heating the water and then we thought we might actually put one of these on the air intake side as well because our original idea was that we have the ducting coming around like this around to there we didn't really want to just leave it here because this is going to be in a tight cupboard and we we're a bit worried about it getting enough airflow going into the heater basically so we're going to have it coming out here but then we've just checked and we have like just enough space to also put a ducting through the bulkhead wall there and into the cab so I think what we've decided is we'll put another one of these diverters about like that and then we can also control how much of the air is being recirculated from inside the van versus inside the cab and we might want to do that depending on ambient temperatures and whether we want to draw the slightly fresher air from the cab and stuff like that. Because all these different decisions we're trying to make now so that we plan for it in the future right? It's always the way. <laughs> You just come out and you think, I'm just going to screw some bits of wood together, glue some stuff and make it work. But it's just you're thinking about like three or four projects ahead all the time. You don't want to make it really awkward when you come to those ones. When we get to those ones, it should be really easy. <laughs> but I feel like I keep saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that? I guess so. <laughs> That's quite good. Quite like that. been in storage forever and ever. It's finally time that we can actually get this out. Our beautiful sink. We bought this right at the start of the conversion and it breaks my heart that it's just been sitting on the shelf for ages so this is a nice moment. There we are. So this is a imitation bath bath sink. It's actually made from is it resin Tim? Yeah. Um, so it's actually a lot lighter than a normal well bath sink. It's a nice shape and so now we can uh, hold it in place and just kind of decide where we want it. Really don't want it butt up there against the oven otherwise someone's cooking the other one washing up he'll get in each other's way but yeah it's nice to have it out finally. So the idea is is that we're going to have two cupboard doors one here and one here and we're going to have each one well this one opening this way and this one opening that way um, but we need to be careful with the way we design it because obviously we've got this handle for the oven here so we're going to have to recess this door back a bit so that the swing will just miss that handle so we're probably going to have it somewhere about there just so there's just enough space for the tank and anything else that we want in there and also to give a nice wide opening for this cupboard seems it's going into the corner so i think we're going to have to make this divider lower and just have the sink in this middle part above it or something like that I think it would be a lot more functional that way. It's getting very confusing, isn't it? It's a bit of everything going on. It's a bit of Frankenstein. Building at the moment. <laughs> this makes me look like I'm lazy, stop it. It's been really fiddly 
trying to work out all of these bits. This is a bit of a head scratcher. So yeah, she's taking a uh, laid back approach to, uh, <laughs> to helping out today. <laughs> Just trying to figure out where all of the bits of wood are going to go to actually hold everything up. Basically because we're trying to avoid having any pillars coming down to hold the sink up because because the door is going to be here when you open the cupboard we don't really want to just go straight into a post because it's going to make it really awkward to get things in and out i feel like we thought this cabinet was going to be the hardest one and then the next one to be really easy but actually we found that every next cabinet for some reason has been a little bit trickier and more awkward than the one before so luckily we're on the last one <laughs> right Ugh, let's cut something figure this out have mocked up a little shelf in this cupboard. is finally ready to go right so many bits <laughs> this one looks like it's kind of a workshop with a sink cut out or something <laughs> yeah you can finally do a dry fit now and actually see if it works do it Together, something like that. Obviously, once it's all glued and pinned and screwed and stuff, it'll be a lot more stable. But yeah, it's pretty cool. And then what we've done is we've made these bits removable, so we'll just put a finger pull there. So hopefully, we can get access to everything we might need to in the future. So we'll pull out this big one. First test to see if we can actually get this out. Okay, yeah, it's not too bad. So we can get to the diesel heater in there if we need to do anything. And we've tried to leave enough space, so in theory, we could even take the whole diesel heater out if we wanted to. And uh, we've got a little bit of space as well. Right, if we wanted to put a pump or something in there and wire it, pump it through there, we should be able to. Don't know about that yet. And then just the last one at the back. Ooh. Which lets us get into where the ducting and dividers and stuff like that are going to be. So yeah, it's worked out pretty good. Probably won't need to go into that that often, I imagine. But if we do need to, then we can. Awesome. Glue it together. 
Yeah, finally, this thing has taken ages to build. Counted, there are 27 pieces that make up this cabinet, which is a bit ridiculous. It's very, very custom fit. And to actually put it together, that was a bit interesting. We've got a bit of this uh, white wood, which we've got the bands around the top and sides and things. So we were thinking that we would just pocket it would be really nice and easy. But it doesn't work very well because if I try and screw that in there, basically they don't really hold. They just go round and round. Uh, we didn't realise this at the time, but so white wood is spruce, really, really quick growing wood, mostly spruce anyway. And the wood we've been using most of the stuff before is redwood, which is pine. The redwood has really, really dense fibres, um, grows quite slowly, whereas the spruce grows ridiculously quickly. And that basically means for us that even though this is really nice and light, it's actually a bit annoying to work with. So you can see it's basically just falling apart. So it will make it work. We're going to use um, some glue and clamp it very you know, nicely. And then for the plywood as well, this um, eucalyptus poplar ply, again, really nice and light, which is good but pay the price on quality compared to the birch we've used before again. This sheet has um, some staples in, actual little metal staples, which threw us off quite a bit. So we're gonna try and remove some of those. Yeah, basically it'll all work, but it's just uh, a lot more fiddly than we were expecting when we started. So we've learned a lot about wood. <laughs> it's bad, haven't we? So at least it'll be a nice lightweight cabinet, won't it? Last pin. All done. <laughs> Finally. I think we've ended up with like half a box of matchsticks inside this thing. Probably. <laughs> we stuffed a few matchsticks in some of the holes that weren't working so that they would actually screw in properly. <laughs> well, it looks pretty good. Now we just got to hope it still fits. <laughs> I was yeah. very worried that that wasn't going to go in. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been very annoying. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, it matches up really quite nicely with the um, toe kick box thingy underneath. Here we go, it's starting to look a lot more like a kitchen now. Finally, it's getting there, isn't it? Yes. There we go, look at that. Nice, Yay. that looks really quite nice. <laughs> cool. Well, I think we're going to leave it there for this one because we still need to paint them obviously and make the drawers and the cupboard doors and things like that. But we'll probably pick that up in the next one. So see you yeah. then. See you next time. Bye. Bye.